Erika and welcome back to my channel. So for today's vlog, I will be sharing with you about the healthcare in the United States. But I will be doing that while we are on the way to Mass. So expect a moving background as well as some noise. So yeah. in the United States is kind of complicated so make sure you have your pen and paper with you so you can take notes anyway in this video expect to have uh, to learn the definitions of terms of the commonly used words in terms of healthcare insurance um, I will also provide scenarios that will help you understand those definitions of terms better additionally I will also be sharing our latest health um, expenditure or experience in the United States. My husband recently had his ARIF, so that is the operation of the bone or internal fixation in his collarbone. These are the terms that you need to take note. First is the premium, two is the deductible, three is a copay, four is a co-insurance, and five is a maximum out of pocket. So the first word is premium. That is the amount of money you pay to the health insurance. And it depends. Some pays weekly, bi-weekly, monthly, or whatsoever. But in my case, it has been set up um, by my employer bi-weekly. So in a month, I pay twice. And in here, you have the option. You can either um, grab what your employer is offering you, or you can search or find your own um, health insurance in the marketplace. It's up to you. Basically, my premium pay will depend on, on my option. So my employer offers a health plan that I can choose from. This is offered to all the full-time employees anyway. So yeah, the first one is the maximum value plan. They also offer standard plan and of course the consumer driven high deductible plan or the CDHD plan. So what I have shared with you is what is my employer offers us, but it doesn't necessarily mean that all the employers offer the same healthcare benefits or plans. So make sure you ask your HR or the right person in your um, organizations. And moreover, it's really hard to suggest what kind of plan is suitable for you because it's only you who knows what are your healthcare needs. For instance, if you know that um, you easily get sick and things like that, you know which to choose. The next word is deductible. So deductible is actually the fixed amount of money that an insured person needs to pay before the insurance cover a cost or start contributing for the healthcare cost. So this is how a deductible works. For instance, the healthcare policy that you availed has a deductible of 40 hundreds. And then in a scenario wherein you went to a clinic, had a treatment, and you have a total bill of 20 hundreds, that means that you need to pay all the 20 hundreds. And your health insurance will not share. It's because you haven't reached your deductibles yet, which is 40 hundreds. But in other cases, for instance, you went to a clinic, had a treatment, and you have a total bill of 50 hundreds. That is the time where your health insurance starts sharing with your health expenditure because you already reach and go beyond your deductibles, which is 40 hundreds. So this doesn't necessarily mean that you need to have this bill one time, but all your health care bills before your deductibles, you will be responsible for it. The next word is going to be copy or copayment. So this is the amount that is fixed that you need to pay every time you avail a health care service. It can be a follow-up checkup, lab test, screening test, hospitalizations. And it depends upon your healthcare insurance policy. Some do not have to pay a copay, so zero, just like my insurance. But some have to pay um, $10 or $15. This is every encounter with them. Moving forward to the next word, which is the co-insurance. So remember, we talk about deductibles. What happens after deductibles, after you meet your deductibles? That is when the co-insurance comes in. So co-insurance is actually the percentage an insured person pays after meeting the deductibles. It depends again on your health policy. There are those who has 70%, um, 30%, 70% is being covered by the health insurance and 30% is being covered by you, or it can also be 75, 25. So pay attention to those so that you know how much you are going to be paying so yeah as i've told you earlier the healthcare in the usa is kind of complicated i hope you're still with me because you will learn a lot more that's not it so we talk about you paying your healthcare costs 
before deductibles and when you reach your deductibles, that is when your um, insurance starts sharing with your cost. That is what is called the co-insurance. And after co-insurance, you will need to know more about the maximum out-of-pocket. So what is maximum out-of-pocket or max OOP? Maximum out-of-pocket is actually the highest amount of money you will need to pay on your medical bills. So the rest, as long as it is a part of your health policy, will be paid by your health insurance. For instance, um, in my case, the maximum out-of-pocket um, in the health insurance I am right now is 11900 So as soon as I reach 11900 all of the medical bills that I will need to pay as long as it is covered by the healthcare policy will be paid by my health insurance. So those are the very important words that you need to know with regards to health insurance in the USA. But I'm going to give you two more bonus words that will help you in the future in terms of choosing which is the right um, health insurance plan for you. So the first one is the FSA or the Flexible Savings Account. So basically this is only offered to those who are employed. So if you are self-employed, you cannot have FSA. But if you're employed, you can have the FSA. So this is um, employer-sponsored um, savings account for health. So um, you need to spend this to those eligible um, medical expenses within a year. Because if you don't spend it within a year, this will um, reset to zero the following year. And you cannot have this rollover. Meanwhile, we have the S HSA or the health savings account, which is owned by you. But there are certain plans um, that you need to avail so that you can qualify for um, HSA. For instance, in the example that I have given you, um, based on the um, health insurance being offered by my employer, you are only eligible to, eligible to have um, HSA if you avail the um, high deductible savings or high deductible insurance plan. So an HSA is actually owned by you and even if you change your employer the following month, you can have that savings roll over to your new employer and you don't need to spend it um, in a year because that is yours. You can actually invest it and you can have it compounded if you know that um, you are not going to use it or touch it within certain years. So that is the difference of FSA and HSA. Understand the health insurance in the USA, I'm going to give you a scenario, but I'm going to use the numbers I have provided in this vlog. So my partner had into a bike crash and he had his collarbone um, fractured and it needed to be um, to have a surgical repair which is ORIF. And for that, we got the bill more than $30,000. And so I have talked about deductibles. Since um, the operation or the surgical or medical um, process is not one time, so first he got into the urgent care, and from there we had a bill of two thousand. So, and then from there they scheduled a surgical repair, and the surgical repair um, and everything cost thirty thousand dollars. So. Um, my deductible is 4000 The health insurance shared to the following cost after the deductible. And um, I also have a max of 11900 After we reach the 11900 the rest of it will be paid by my health insurance. So in total, even though the bill um, is 30000 plus dollars, I will only have to pay 11900 because that's the maximum out of pocket. So the example I have provided in terms of numbers um, is based on the consumer-driven high deductible plan with a deductible of 4000 um, and with a maximum out-of-pocket of 11900 for a family plan. So that is all for today. I hope you have learned something new from 